special edition. The, uh, I guess this is the uh, we be beat Roswell. <laughs> And I think, I don't know if you're going to get into this, so if, if you are, I apologize, but uh, the stat I heard was this is the first time we beat Roswell this bad since 1954. And, and, and another quick trivia for everybody, I guess, this, does anyone know when the last time we beat Roswell, Cambridge, and Alpharetta as a clean sweep? Never. Never. That's right, never. So this is the first time. So anyways, that's that's what constituted a special edition. You got something about it? Wow, combined score of 95 and 22. So thank you. That's a great, great stat. So guys, I'm going to turn it over to Bill Weaver. Everybody remembers Bill from last week. And Bill's uh, got son, Team Jackson Weaver. Um, and we're just going to walk through again some stats and the highlights of the game. Look forward as well to uh, what's coming up with region play. Um, what we'll do is again we've got the uh, the uh, questions. Please fill them out. We love these. Last week was fantastic. Or two weeks ago was fantastic. I think we had like 13, 14 questions. Please come up here and grab one of these pencils, paper. Um, make sure you fill that out. And then we'll do that after the break. So what we'll do is do this for about 30, 45 minutes. Take a bathroom, a bio break, and then uh, come back out here and finish the questions. So. With that, I'll turn it over to Bill Weaver. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate Thanks, Bill. It. And welcome to a special edition of Black Corner. Special edition. Here we are at City Chan, a beautiful fall night in downtown Alpharetta. Great host here, and thanks for everybody for showing up. Uh, to my left is our prestigious head football coach in Old Georgia, out of Black. Adam, thanks for joining us tonight. And uh, in case everybody hasn't heard, as Tim just said, our varsity football team went in Friday night to the Hornets Nest and exterminated those guys with a pounding of 40 to 7. That is a big, big deal. Did you expect that outcome? Uh, I knew we had a shot to, uh, to really take the game over if, if we put everything together. We've been talking about that week in and week out, how you know you can just feel it getting closer. You can feel it getting closer. And I talked to the guys about, you know, that outcome wasn't because of one good week of work. It was, you know, dating back to, to post North Burnett. And I really felt like our, our practice started to become, you know, on point. And so stacking week after week after week after week on top, uh, you know, that that's how you start getting those type of successes. And um, you know, we talked about it again today about, you know, that that's what's gotten you to this successful point. You know, the unfortunate thing is it takes a long time to get there, but it's, it, it can be gone in an instant. So we just want to make sure we stay true to our pre uh, preparation and, and uh, you know, keep taking every day serious and, and improve 1% at a time uh, each day. Great. So, you know, Coach, I want, to, I want to walk through the game a little bit because there was some really exciting stuff and some games and shit that happened during the game. But... Uh, that team, Roswell, uh, the great athletes on that team. Offense has been a little sporadic. However, you, you know, they find ways to pop it during the course of the game. How does how does that affect your game plan? Uh, well, it, it was kind of cool because we definitely had a big picture game plan. We, we take one each week, you know, not just the X's and O's of offense and defense, but, you know, kind of our mentality going into it. Um, and, and what you hit on there is that they were they were explosive. They, they weren't a team that typically drove the field. You know, it was it was a 40-yard touchdown, 50-yard touchdown, touchdown from outside the red zone. Uh, but as the game, as the field shrinks, uh, they didn't really seem to be the type of team that just drove it and punched it in. So, with that in mind, you know, we wanted to take a very aggressive approach early on. Uh, you know, in, in, in real emotional games. You know, it's kind of like that boxing match. Everybody's got all the energy. Everybody's going 100%. Yards are hard to come by. So we were going to be aggressive on fourth downs. Uh, we were going to be aggressive in special teams. Uh, we were going to try and uh, early on come out and, and, and gain an advantage there based on our kind of understanding of who they were and, and who we were. Yeah. So you put together an impressive 80-yard drive in the first series. But there was a big play in that in that series. You went for it on fourth down, fourth and one. Uh, what did you see? Why did you do that? It, it, just going back to, to what we were talking about, I, you know, 
communicating that to the kids ahead of time uh, in the stands it may seem you know he's it's panicking. He's reaching. Why, why is he going for it in, in his own territory? But it was just the things that we talked about earlier. Uh, you know, they knew that was going to be the mindset. We challenged the defense to have our back. You know, if it didn't work out, you got our back. We, we, we believe in you that you can stop them, you can hold them. Um, you know, later in the game, you notice um, a stat that we really look at is, is red zone. And, you know, we forced two turnovers in the red zone. You know, they were one of three in the red zone. So, so again, just kind of going back to what we were talking about, um, you know, it's kind of a foregone conclusion. We had a fourth and one right there. It didn't really matter where it was. We were probably going to go for it early yeah. on. Right. So we kick off. They come right back, 82-yard drive, score a touchdown. At that point, you got to think we're in, we're in for a dog fight. Yeah, they, uh, they did. They, they came out. That, that's the thing. You, you knew they would, and that's going back to why I wanted to really be aggressive early on. I, I didn't think that they could run away from us. Uh, but I knew they were going to test us. Uh, I knew that, you know, it was going to have to be a 48-minute game. So, you know, when they come out and, and they drive down, uh, you know, really, effort, not, I wouldn't call it effortless, but it was chunk plays and, and you know, a little scary, to, to say the least. You know, we were trying some different things on defense. We were really ranching it up, our pressure. Uh, you know, we, you know, we were there. We just maybe, you know, missed a gap here, missed a gap there, and they were able to kind of, kind of cut through us right there early on. But again, credit to my defensive staff for making some great adjustments kind of after the first couple of series and, and, and kind of setting the tone back there. So we trade a couple of punts after that. We come back with a nice 83 yard drive for another score. However, another fourth down situation. We're in, we're, we're on our side of the field, fourth and three, punt team shows up and you decide we're going to do something different. Yeah. Is uh, that something that you saw on film the week before, or is that something that you saw in the game? <laughs> it was something that was, that was worked all week. Um, again, broken record in the aggressive mentality and, and being aggressive, and especially in, a, in an area we thought we had an advantage for special teams. We put a lot of pride in our special teams, and, and I felt that we had an advantage there. Um, and we've been messing around with our punk formations and, and kind of giving people different things to look at um, without getting too... Uh, into the details, we moved the guy out to create what's called an unbalanced look on the left side there, and I wanted to see how they adjusted in the first the first punt, and uh, they gave us what we wanted. Uh, we were able to essentially get a six on three number count. Um, so I don't care if we were on our own five, if it's six on three to get one yard, I think that's probably pretty good odds. So, so we went with it. Great. Well. It worked, and you capped that drive off with an 18-yard pass uh, from from Yates to hold Shaw. Uh, great job by Shaw. Great effort on that. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, that, that was a great drive. And if you remember, we actually kind of scored earlier in the drive. We, we had one go in. We had a call back. Uh, one of the few penalties, I'm happy to say, that we had in, in, in the game. And we're starting to really correct that and bring that focus in. Um, but yeah, third and 18. I thought Coach had a good, safe play call right there. So I tried to take the shot in the end zone, get it out in space to to a playmaker and uh, hold it when you nail out. And like I said earlier, we got a lot of mouths to feed on offense. So you, you can see they get hungry and, and they want to do something with it when they get the opportunity. And I think that's just going to make us better as we go down the road. That's great. It's great effort. So they come right back out, drive the ball down the field. I think that next drive, about a 61 yard drive for them. They're inside the red zone. They throw it to the corner of the end zone. You got to be thinking, here we go again, right? We're up by seven, we're driving the ball, ball goes towards the end zone, but we get the big pass. Right, yeah, and you saw it was, uh, I think it was like a fourth and 15 or something like that. I think they were maybe just outside their field goal range. Uh, uh, I, I don't know, it was maybe on the 20, uh, 15 or something like that. And, uh, you know, we had, we had a lot of guys rotating in on defense. Uh, we're trying to really get to that that uh, that mindset of that philosophy where we almost have three guys for every two positions, and then we rotated our corners around a little bit last last uh, Friday. And it's Iron Waters who's been playing a lot of a lot of offense this year. Got a lot of time at, at, on defense, and he really made us look smart right there, going up, guarding uh, their probably highest profile guy, 
the 22, uh, the, the, the young hopper. He's got Alabama offers and Power 5 offers everywhere they put him in for that play. And Zaire uh, tracked his hip and went up and made a great play for us right there. That, that was one of the biggest plays in the game, I thought. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, that's the game where, you know, had, had you not made that play, had they scored, you know, it's a very different half. Yeah, absolutely. So, we get the ball back and then big play is not for us. Right? Uh, third play, there's a 75 yard pass, I believe, to uh, to Dash. What was it about that play, Coach, is that watching their their defensive backs, their corners were off and walked up in a cover two position. But their safeties kept creeping up and close to the box and that seam looked pretty open. You hit him on that 75-yard post route. Did you see that during the course of the game that, that those guys were creeping up and that was open? Or? Yeah, I mean, we came over the headset. You know, we're sitting there watching the safety make the tackle. I mean, we're, we're getting a great push up front. You know, Solly's running through there. And we're like, why is it not popping? You know, we're getting four and five, which is great, but but it looked like something that was popping. But sure enough, it's that safety that keeps coming down. So, you know. And he take advantage of an over aggressive safety. You throw one right behind him and, and uh, he hit dash, he unhooks the trailer and uh, everybody catching him on that one. No, they weren't. Uh, great play, great call, um, great execution. So we kick off, they come back, they're driving the ball again. They, they make a 69 yard drive. Um, and then another big defensive play. Right in the field, George Coyle come running up and, and uh, make a great hit ball from his waist. We recover. That seemed like the big momentum change right there. Yeah, you know, being able to go in the half 21 7 was huge. Uh, being able to, again, you know, almost be prophetic in a way that we told the guys we were going to be aggressive while we were going to be aggressive. We told the guys that, you know, make sure you tackle them. Make them play another down. Uh, we feel feel strong that, that if you can limit the, the truly explosive play, uh, you know they're going to do something that'll give us a shot uh, to get the ball back or turn it over. And, and, and being able to do it right there, uh, you know, swarm to the ball, rally to it, knock it out, cover it. Uh, it was just it was a great way to end the half. Uh, and, and we're definitely going in with a lot of confidence. Yeah, I mean, those turnovers obviously key in the first half, right? Uh, without those, it could have been a very different game. We could have gone into half very well tied at that point. Uh, they had, Roswell had 331 total yards in the game. 240 of those yards came in the first half. Very different second half of the game for our defense. What, what, what changed in half that? Um, well, it, the, the change started happening midway through the, the second quarter, uh, in the first quarter. Um, you know, again, we wanted to bring pressure. We wanted to make sure we, we got and harassed the quarterback, and, and we were doing it with, with more blitzes and, and things like that. And, and the thing about blitzing is it, it makes you vulnerable to the run game, and that's where most of their explosive plays were coming. Uh, we, we were, you know, backers were coming and running hard uh, and getting through, but they were overshooting their gap. You know, you run right by the ball carrier, and then there's nobody left for them. So the adjustment was moving to more of a four-man front and, and utilizing our, our D-line essentially just to stunt and, and create pressure and allowing our, our linebackers uh, to be in their more natural state, fit the run gaps. Uh, you know, being covered. So, you know, we, we went with five, more five-man pressures early on, and then just by simply going to the four-man four -man, uh, front, uh, we were able to, to kind of be sound against the run, but also create pressure and, and harassment. So, Coach, come out with third quarter at that point. Uh, a lot of things going our way, although the third quarter was pretty quiet. The players got a little more work in the third quarter. But what was going on with uh, with the offense in the third quarter? Um, you know, I think we, we kept moving the ball, you know, just they're a pretty good football team. I mean, I know the, the score ends up 47 and you tack a few on late. Uh, they, they've got a lot of talented guys over there. Um, you know, just at that point, it's 21 to 7. Uh, you start readdressing the, uh, how aggressive you're going to be there. You don't want to be over aggressive now. Now you don't want to just blow your 14 point lead, you know. Um, 
but stay confident. Really didn't make any major adjustments on offense. Just just kept uh, true with what what we had planned all week to do, and and uh, wanted to continue to run the ball. I think uh, you know Solomon ended up with 27 carries. Uh, Jordan had quite a few. We we introduced the Wildcat package. It had a few. We we wanted to stay true with with, with kind of wearing them down, if you will, uh, and taking the big shots and, and, and uh, passing. Yeah, great. Well, obviously. In your next touchdown drive, it all came together. I mean, 99 total yards in that next drive, capped off by uh, what was a uh, another nice play. Looked like you were taking advantage of an aggressive safety event. You ran a quick slant uh, for a 14-yard uh, touchdown. Uh, it, were you seeing the same look inside the red zone from them? Were those safety Yeah, it, it, it was almost like deja vu. Uh, you know, just seeing the safety come down. You know, hearing Coach Reeves come over the headset. You know, just a great, great play call. You know, I, I had to go back and look, but I think that was maybe our third, third touchdown drive of over 12 plays. And that, you know, as a an offensive guy, I mean, that is, I mean, that has music to your ears right there. Yeah. You, know, you, you like the big plays. You, you like the, you know, the explosive stuff. But when, when you when you can prove that you're putting together drives on 13, 14, 15 play drives, that means that you're you're executing. You're not doing those the little things. It means you're keeping your defense off the field uh, and you're wearing them down um, throughout the course of the game. Yeah. Well, well, great play. That was Dash's second touchdown and. Uh... Uh, you know, that, that's uh, at that point, you're almost starting to feel like the game's in the back, right? But you still got a lot of time left on the clock. So we, we come out, uh, force a punt. Now we're feeling great. Uh, drive the ball another 47 yards when we get stalled inside the red zone. Uh, but Hayden comes in and bangs one through. 32 yarder, but that ball probably would have been good for 45. I mean, they really handled that ball. What, how do you feel about your kicker? Yeah, that, that was awesome to see. Uh, you know, again, taking back some of the aggression there. Uh, you know, love the opportunity to see our kicker, you know, in a big, on a big stage, even though the score is not that close uh, at that point. You know, it's still just a three score game. Um, and you saw Roswell come back the week before on Archer in a very similar situation. Uh, but to give him that opportunity, he had a lot of uh, uh, field goal opportunities this year. But for him to come through and, and I mean, just emphatically bang that thing through, uh, that, that gives you confidence down the road because you know he's going to have to make a big one somewhere down the line. Yeah, absolutely. Well, he hammered that one. It was a great looking kick. Um, and so after that, then it was all just icing on the cake, right? We kick off, they proceed to run three plays for negative 20 yards. And uh, their quarterback, Little John's in the end zone and throws an incomplete pass to their right guard. They get hey, intentional ground. Yes. Um, but what happened after that was great. They kick off, obviously, from their 20 on the safety. And we take one to the house. Yeah, that, that, that's the icing on the cake you're looking for right there. I think that that's about the time when I started seeing the water bottles going up in the air. And, uh, but, you know, hey, it's, at that point it's 47. Uh, talking with you guys, talking with the, with the guys. That's a, it was a long time in, in the making. You know, a lot of, of pent-up aggression there. Uh, so it was good to see the boys have some fun with that and, and you know, be able to bring it home that way. Yeah, well. Uh, Albright looked incredible on that play. You know, I got a couple of blocks and then hit the edge and he was gone. Yeah, that was awesome. So you go into the locker room, Coach. Uh, tell everybody what that's like. I mean, that, you're, you're coming off your third rival victory of the year. You pound Roswell in Roswell. What, what was going on in the locker room after the game? Uh, you know, I mean, what was really going on on the field. Uh, they had to kick us off that field. I think we were going to stay there all night if they let us. Uh, and, and you know that's good. That's that's what it's all about. You you you, you never want to get too high, get too low. Uh, you you, you got to keep things in perspective. Um, you know we close our, our non-region schedule. Uh, we we have a lot of emotional uh, games in this non-region schedule, from the rivalry games to the Edward game uh, to to a hard-fought game with with North Burnett. Uh, but you know again, kind of back to the first thing we talked about earlier. That. They didn't just put their pants on and go out there and play a good game. It, it, that was a lot of work. That, that was a long time coming uh, of us really <laughs> hammering and, and being intentional about the way we practice, the way we prepare, 
uh, the way we built this team to have depth and, and to have um, you know lots of different weapons on offense and lots of different bodies on defense uh, to withstand a, a 48 minute game. Um, you know you struggle through some some growing pains. You, know, you struggle through a, a, a loss in, in, in the last 12 seconds, um, but I'll come to a head against your biggest rival to play your best game today. So, you know, with that being said, I, I think the humility that they felt early in the year ha has balanced them with the confidence that they should feel now coming out of that game. And that puts us in what I think a very great state of mind to now attack the region schedule. So the red zone played a big factor in this game. Uh, great news is, for us, we were four for four inside the, the red zone at three touchdowns and a field goal. We took two balls away from them in the red zone. How much do you talk about the red zone in practice and during the week? Constantly. Uh, we, we practice red zone, um, you know, for, you know, 20 minutes on Wednesdays. Uh, we, we, we try to touch on it in some aspects every day. Um, you know, we talk, we say it out loud before we go on the field. Uh, we want to limit them from scoring. We want to keep them under 40% scoring touchdowns, and we want to be over 70. Um, you know, we hadn't been been really reaching that mark of late, and then, but in that game, we're 75% and they're, they're 33. So you, you marry that with, with protecting the football, probably the most important stat in, in, in ball is, is your turnover margin with plus two. Uh, I think on the year now, we're somewhere around plus six, uh, plus seven. Which is which is fantastic. Um, so those those keys to victory, if you will, we have we have seven of them. Um, we really hit on all of them. Uh, last Friday night. Yeah, absolutely. Another great game by by your top players. Uh, Van Horse, still your workhorse, carried the ball 27 times for 110 yards. That game. Still at the play. Yeah, I told Ben if, uh, if we walk off that field with a loss and he hadn't touched it 20 times, and he ain't called a play for yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and Yates, another game, right at 50 percent passing, uh, threw for 186 yards and three touchdowns. Obviously, he had that long 75-yard strike or dash, but uh, his play just seems to be consistent, and he seems to have a lot of confidence out there. Yeah, well, and he's doing a lot of things that people probably don't even pick up on. He's making checks at the line. Uh, he's, he's reading, um, you know, those bubbles that we threw early, uh, those were all run pass options. So he has to analyze where, where everybody is. You know, that was our, that was our first, uh, I guess, attempt to control 22, which is their best player. If he's going to come up, we're going to throw it out. If he winds out, we're going to run it. Uh, and I think they never really fully had an answer for that. But that that's, that goes back to your quarterback putting you in the right play. Yeah. Uh, and again, there's other things that he's doing out there that, that probably the common person doesn't see. Uh, the kids will play their guts out for him. I thought one of the coolest things I saw all night, and I, I told the kids I'd, I'd take 10 more of them. But we got the personal foul protecting our quarterback with his helmets off. We'd probably get a personal foul on me on my own team if we're not protecting our quarterback with his helmets off. So, uh, but they did. They they rallied around him. They they had his back, and that's what we're working for. You know, just all in together, band of brothers. Um, you know, and, and he's our trigger guy. He's got to lead the team, and he's doing a phenomenal job. That's uh, great. You know, he's throwing the ball well, but he's got some pretty good things too. Uh, ended up with 47 yards rushing on top of that. Uh, and then receivers, you know, obviously we talked about Dash. Uh, if he was on your fantasy team this week, he did pretty well. Uh, 99 yards and two touchdowns. That puts you up uh, some good points, especially with a 75 yarder. Uh, and then Holden Shaw, of course, a couple of catches uh, in that one over the middle for the TD as well. But, uh, you know, you're spreading the ball around. We had five guys that, that made catches, as you said. We got a lot of weapons out there. Uh, how do you feel about your receiving core right now and, and where they are from the development standpoint? They probably took the biggest, the biggest jump of the year uh, last week. You know, we, we talked a lot about the improvement of the uh, in the quarterback play and of the O line play. And, um, you know, those guys really it's tough because you know they they got to share time and, and you know each week. You know, depending on the package and, and the personnel groups that we send out there, you know, they don't really know. They, they got to be kind of minute man. They got to be on call, ready to rock. 
Um, but while they caught the ball well and they had some explosive plays, the thing that was most impressive was the fact that we were blocking the perimeter. It was tremendous. You know, those, those quick bubble screens early in the game that really set our game plan don't happen without somebody you know, blocking their tail off. Uh, you know, there was a big block by Dash uh, when, when Jordan's uh, run in their first touchdown. And, you know, those are the things that, that everybody likes to look and celebrate the touchdowns. You know, a lot of times that's the easier part. You know, it, it's, it's the dirty work that I thought they did this week. And, 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 and the overall attitude of sharing, you know, that, that, that role. Um, you know, we're going to be dangerous if, if, you know, we got five, six, seven guys each week that teams are going to have to scheme up and, and uh, you know, you're, not, you're never going to know where, where, the, where the punch is going to come from. Yep. And, uh, look, I think we had some guys that helped us out a lot this, catch, or this week catching the ball. Uh, Dakota Warfield had a, had a big catch. Uh, <laughs> Kevin Murphy had, uh, had a 25 yard. Oh, yeah. That was, that was one of my favorite calls of the game right there. Yeah. So, so what, what did you see on that play, Coach? Um, again, it was it was safety leverage um, and uh, play that we had in, in the menu, and, and we noticed at the corners anytime we went in that that closed set with the tight end there, trips to the other side. For some reason the corner wouldn't come on top of the tight end, and, and so it was a, again a run pass option. We we're running outside zone right. If the backer flows with it, we just replace it with a, with a hot pass right there. And, you know, the safety just not being there made it even great. So it was just even better right there. So Kevin did a great job reeling it in and, and, and getting us a huge first down right there. Well, great play. So as we look at the season as a whole, some of the things that we executed well, we talked about the fourth down conversions, uh, turnovers, you know, those were a big deal in that game. But they've been a big deal all season. You know, we look at, you've gone for it 11 times this year on fourth down. You've converted eight of those. Our opponents actually, and I'm not sure everybody knows this, but our opponents have gone for 12 times and only converted four of those. That, those are big momentum shifters. I mean, you know, between that, you've got your two for two on onside kicks, you were four for four inside the red zone. Those are the little things that make a team successful. Yeah, uh, and again, I, I go back to what we call our keys to victory, and it's it's things like red zone, it's things like turnovers, it's things like you know penalties, it's things like. Uh, you know, pursuit and effort. Um, X's and O's are great. You can draw up two plays and, and great blitzes and cover three and yada 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 to the cows come home, but if you're not doing the the big boulder things, if you will, of scoring points when you're down there. I mean, you can have a 90 yard drive and, and, and stall out the red zone and that was great, you know, but, but it didn't get you any points. Uh, and then again, yeah, turnovers. Um, Again, I think you know, counting the onside kicks, I, I believe we're plus seven. Uh, if, you, if you can be plus one and a half throughout a year, you're, you're going to be pretty good. You're, you're going to be tough to beat. So, uh, and, and yeah, so just like you're saying, those, those are huge things. Those are things that transcend schemes and you know rivalries and all those type of things. Those things that we practice and preach constantly. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and defensively. Uh, Kind of the tail of two halves of this last game. And, you know, like we were talking about a few minutes ago, giving up 240 to 331 yards in that first half. But what was the what was the difference? What did you see in your team? Was it was it something mental? Was it an adjustment in that second half? Because those kids just came out and were super aggressive. Yeah, I mean, it was partly an adjustment. And, and partly, uh, they just kept running to the ball. You know, they kept running the ball. We, we tackled well. It wasn't our best tackling game. Uh, you know, we, we made some mistakes, some alignment mistakes, some some fit mistakes, if you will. Uh, but what we always thought is make them play another play. Make, make them play another play. And so uh, we continue to run to the ball. We continue to tackle, uh, get them down. And, uh, you know, as the game wore on, and I think, we started to build a lead, Roswell has to shift their mentality as well. So now they're playing catch up. So, you know, most of their success had come on the ground. You know, they had a really good back, they, they have had a local quarterback. That's tough. That's the Falcons today. Um, so yeah. so uh, you know that that kind of went to it as well. Yeah well it's exciting to see uh, our defense and their intensity the 
some of the uh, key plays that have happened during the course of the year. The turn games around with defense. We talked about it in the first half this week with that fumble and, and the interception. And speaking of interceptions, you got six interceptions this year. What's actually really interesting is six different kids have caught those interceptions. Yes, yeah, so you got Blanks, Waters, Walker, Rhodes, Charleston, and Brennan McNeely all have interceptions on the year. That's a pretty cool stat. Well, again, I think it's a testament to, to the overall philosophy of getting lots of kids involved, you know, having them ready to play, especially early on. Well, not especially early on. I mean, it, it's it's what we're building to. Uh, you know, again, talk with the guys today in our meeting. You, you got to embrace that role. Um, you know, we can't be selfish here. We can't worry that, you know, count my reps, count my, you know, who's on the field. We can only put 11 out there at one time. You know, if you're not out there first, it doesn't mean that you're not starter worthy. Maybe that's just where we're starting. We'll roll those guys in and, and, and stay fresh. I mean, and that's probably a big part of, of the second half, second half success. You know, our guys aren't wearing down. You know, we've got 15, 16 guys running full speed throughout the game to stay fresh. Um, and, and I think that, that shows up as the game wears on. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, lastly, you know, your linebackers, we talked about uh, your linebacker play. I mean, you've got some guys that are really, uh, really excelling at linebacker. Uh, they're your leading tacklers on the team, as they should be. We talked about that last time. Who are your, who are your real defensive leaders? Is, is it the guys you expected coming into the season, or have some guys surprised you a little bit? Well, I think we're, we're a heavy senior team on that side, and... Uh, you know, from from the blankses of the world, and, and you know, George and Price and B Mac and and uh, you know DJ Albright, and, and you know one of the younger guys who I think really steps up as, as a vocal leader is is Diddy Jordan. You know, and he's doing a great job and, and really kind of sparks those guys emotionally. Um, you can just kind of tell where his mood goes, kind of the team to follow, and, and it's just cool. So it's really a, a by committee type of thing. I think they enjoy playing together. I think they play hard for one another. Um, I think they hold each other accountable. You know, those are the type of things that you're looking for. Yeah, and speaking of by committee, your top three tacklers are all tied at 35 tackles apiece, which is kind of interesting at this point in the season. In, in Georgie Coyle, Jordan Davis, Price Towns uh, are doing a phenomenal job for that. All right, so I know that uh, we're going to look ahead a little bit. We, we can take some more questions about Roswell if you have them in the uh, Q&A session afterwards. But you know, let's focus a little bit of time on uh, what's next. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call this another big game. <laughs> so, uh, you know, not, not that you haven't had the stress of three rivalries already, uh, but now we get to go play your old football team. You might know something about these kids on the other side of the ball, but what do you expect to see this week? Oh, I mean, it's going to be a, a traditional, you know, Western side, Forsyth County type of team. They're going to be uh, extremely disciplined. They're going to play really hard, uh, inspired. Um, you know, obviously there's going to be an emotional attachment there for, for those guys. You know, but the good thing is, I told you guys I haven't called a touchdown in 20 years, so you know I'm not out there playing. Uh, and they don't, they don't need to think about that at all. We just need to prepare like we prepare, and, and uh, you know, you're not going to get get a win one for the Gipper style speech from me this week. You know, I addressed it today, and, and that that's the last time I'll address it. Uh, we're going, we're going to focus on us. If they want to focus on us, that's fine. Uh, you know, but to me, you know, it's just about, you know, like I told the guys last week, it's about the team in white, you know, and, and we'll go out there and, and uh, play our style of football and, and nothing other than what we came to do and what we prepared to do. Right. So as fans watching the game, who should we be looking for on the west uh, west side? What, what key players are uh, are you looking at scheming against? Um, you know, they they have a very uh, very dynamic safety, KB, like he's number two. He's probably their best defensive player. They got a, a couple good defensive linemen. Um, number fifty uh, on offense. They've got the big tight end. He's wearing number twenty three this year. That's big breath in the hand. And. Um, you know, the quarterback who was uh, actually a slot receiver in the past two years who broke the school record for receptions for 97, uh, you know, career-wise. Um, 
Uh, he's now the quarterback, so he's mobile. He's he's he's, he's a very confident, um, you know, call it that it factor style uh, kid. Uh, so we'll definitely have to have a great plan to contain him and, and keep him in check. Uh, and they also got a uh, they're strong, strong special team. Uh, I think they've made a, a 52 yard field goal against Noonan, I believe it was. Um, and you know they just do a great job in all phases of those games. And as you would expect from a, a you know well coached team that, that pays attention to details and, and it's gonna make you earn anything you get. Absolutely. Well, good luck in that game, coach. I know you know. It, you know those kids. There's something emotional about that, but we appreciate your approach to uh, keeping our kids out of that, uh, that emotional state. So, great first half of the season. I think, uh, you know, now it's, it's time that uh, we're playing for the real dollars. Something to the full region schedule here. I always hate to look too far ahead, because uh, I don't want to get, past, get past West, but uh, you've got two back-to-back -back big games. When you look at the region right now, who's playing well and, and who everybody thinks is, uh, has a chance to win it, uh, we got two big weeks ahead of us. Yeah, but I mean, you know, the cliche thing is every one of them count the same. You know, you, you can't take uh, West, South, Central, North, Lambert, none of them for granted. And if you do, it's, it's you know, it's, it's as devastating as, as, as losing any of them. Uh, but, you know, I, I think it's just an honest assessment that you definitely will have to go through the first two that we play. And you're not going to win it without going through those guys. So I, I'm excited, you know, as we were talking about how the non-region, uh, you know, unfolded. I, I feel like it's the perfect time for us to, to take that challenge on and, and go ahead and, you know, go ahead and get some. Yep. Our team seems to be in pretty good shape physically. I think mentally coming out of a big win like that over a rival, uh, they should be in good shape in between the years. But how are we doing physically? Physically, you know, b bumps and bruises like like always. Uh, but other, you know, I, I feel like we're actually adding players right now uh, other than losing them. So that, that, that's an exciting thing. It's, you know, we're getting some guys back, um, you know, get some guys who, who maybe weren't ready to go early in the year. We're starting to step in and see some roles. So, um, you know, I think we're, we're in good shape right there. Um, you know, fingers crossed, knocking on wood. You just take that, like you said, one game at a time, one play at a time. So, last question, Coach, before we uh, take a break. If you look at this first half of the season and how the team has progressed, from what you saw, those first few weeks of being here. Where is the team relative to where you hope they would be or where you thought they would be? Yeah, um, we had talked about it a little bit earlier. I think we all saw the, the potential in this team. And, and, you know, and it was coming in glimpses and, and, and spurts uh, from, from way back in, in May. You know, when you go through the summer and you compete and you work hard, uh, you open up with a, you know, a, a big rivalry game like an Alpharetta. And I'll be the first to, I was scared to death going into that game. Um, and it wasn't because it was, you know, anything other than I knew we weren't where I wanted to be preparation-wise. Um, and, and our training in the summer overcame our lack of what I would call, you know, football preparation. So we weren't there yet. But, but I felt like they lost that game more than we won that game, if that makes sense. Um, it was still a great win. Go into a North Gwinnett team that, that, you know, I guess maybe we were the only ones that knew how good they were going to be, uh, you know, as they're now ranked fourth in the state. Uh, and still, we uh, didn't feel like we were there yet, but, but our athleticism and our and just competitive spirit, I mean, these kids have a great, great desire to compete, and it was overcoming some things, but, but again, dropping that game the way we did, I had this, this kind of calm feeling that, you know, that may have been the best thing for us going into a Cambridge and then a bye week, and that's when I felt it started to click Monday through Thursday. And so to see them progress and not and it not come easy to them, you have to put that work in, and then to put the exclamation point on it last Friday, that gives me that great feeling that you learn the lesson of, of work. You know, you learn how important it is to do that. Um, so, you know, like I said earlier, it, it would, I would actually be a little more, maybe a little more nervous 
hey, we just coasted through, yeah. and now we're going into our region schedule with, with teams that are that are good enough to beat you for sure. Um, so, you know, we talked a lot today about you know learning how to how to perform after a loss, but sometimes you got to learn how to perform after a big win. You got to be able to put it to bed and go back to work. Um, and we talked about those lessons we've learned in the first couple of weeks. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm real excited, as I've been all year, about, about where we are. And, and still, just more room to grow and, and expand and, and continue to improve as a, as a complete team. So you said something there, and I, I said last question. Sorry, Light. Uh, <laughs> coming out of North Gwinnett, seeing where they are now, we talked about it that week. I mean, that, that's probably a little bit of a, a confidence booster, looking at them being ranked fourth in the state. You came out of that game, it just happened to be that they were the ones ahead when the clock ran out. And that, that was one of those games that obviously could have gone either way. You come out of a big win against Roswell. We're going into now region play. What, what are you doing this week specifically to get their heads off of that Roswell game and into the side game? Uh, you know, I mean, there's no magic bullet. You just you just really go back to work. You know, you, you in a way, Winning, it's funny, I said this going into the game, I, I don't want to win in dramatic fashion this week because I think it would be really hard to get them out over that. You know, I've been in, I've been on a team that, that had a huge game. We won, you know, last second, and people talk about it, you know, until first day of the next week. You know, everybody should be excited about that win, and everybody was. Saturday was great, but their mind seemed great today when they came in to watch film and, and get our run in. Because you know, I think they can put it behind us, and the fact that it is region. You know, they everybody understands what's on the table. Um, so I, I fully expect them just put it to bed. Let's go back to work. It's our Monday process, and let's get it. That's great. Well, coach, thanks again. Congratulations on a huge and very fun victory against the Rockets. That was exciting to be there. And as most of you know, for those of you that haven't been here before, we'll spend uh, a little bit of time on a break right now where you have a chance to write down some questions. And I think Tim Boyle is back around. Uh, let's get started. All right, welcome back to the special edition of Black's Corner. This is the fun part of the night. This is where uh, Coach fields questions for friends and family. And I'll say last <laughs> That's exactly what Chris, when I said it last time, uh, it, it's not very often you get a head football coach as well sit up here and answer questions from... Uh, I enjoy torture. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is much appreciated, but i got to imagine it's a little bit easier to do when you're winning football games. Yeah, I just <laughs> But no, it's good. It's good in the in the losses too. Like I said, the, the one of the big goals is to kind of give you a look behind. You know, there's a lot of fault. There's a lot of prep. There's a lot of, of reasoning that we do what we do. And you know, it's cool when you come back and you you had the two for two fourth downs. But you got to live with it when you don't get them too. Uh, so I hope just by doing this, it, it humanizes it. And you know, it's. Okay, well, there's another team on the other side trying to stop you, and sometimes they're going to do it, and sometimes, you know, your, your plan works, and so that's just kind of what it's about. So, yeah. you know, I think it's valuable both winning and... Absolutely, and look, every day we put our kids' hands in your hands, and uh, what you're doing for our boys, not just on the field, but what you're teaching them as a, what it means to be a young man is a big deal. So very much appreciated. Well, we... Again, we have a philosophy, we have a we have a program mission of building men of integrity with the core values of you know Band of Brothers, Pettit, toughness, relentless effort. And you know, years ago when, when I started putting some of that stuff together, I felt like it was just words on paper. And uh, you know, it's been a big mission of mine to make myself better and make the kids better, coaches make each other better. I mean we're all growing through it. You know, I am a better person today because of the time I've spent with, with your kids you know they, they sharpen me every day because i want to be on, on point for them and, and and you know to do right by y'all you know and a lot of times we we're not going to be right but, the, but our heart is I, I hope always in the right spot uh speaking of make sure we get that plug in about the water donations a gallon of water or a case of water 
uh, if anybody can bring it up to the field house so we can donate in, in name of the football program to, to go to Puerto Rico. Uh, my goal is that we get 200 cases and 200 gallons of water for the football team. Uh, the charge was one per player, so I figured we'd go a little above and beyond that and get, get over 200 cases for that. So if you ever think about that, that'd be great. Yeah, if you didn't see that email, you should have it. Uh, take a look at it. That's a big deal. We're, we're actually having uh, a, a collection of cases of water, and those cases are going to be flown down. Uh, and this is a real deal. I mean, these are people that need that kind of help. So let's all uh, pitch in and do our part, and then some. Speaking of community service, uh, anything else in the plans that you're going to do with the team as it relates to the community this year? Get a chance to pick through that. Uh, let the coil on be on that for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think our big our big things in season are probably done right now. It's, it's smaller things. Uh, they can help clean up lunchroom after their lunch. You know, I give them I give them hours for that, or they can. We started study hall last week. You know, if you have two classes at 72 or below, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you come in for a mandatory study hall hour or 40 minutes. We, uh, you know, our players can tutor, uh, get study, you know, get hours there. And just other little knick-knack things that they can do. Um, but yeah, I would like to continue to put, put plans together uh, maybe around Christmas time or, you know, early in the off season. Just, just keep it rolling. Great. Well, we did the Star House, yeah, but last week, not last week, week before last, we had over 30 guys show up and, and uh, play and hang out with, with some at-risk kids after school. And uh, again, I think our guys, they got more out of it than, than uh, the young boys and girls they were serving. So it was really cool. That's great. All right, so let's get to the questions. Um, we've got one question here that talks about the fact that we've got two 99-yard drives in the second half of the season. How does that change the game? What's the impact of the game when, when everybody's cheering about the fact that they downed a punt or whatever it was on the one-yard line, and now we march down field to score? Yeah, I mean, they're huge. Uh, even just, obviously, you're getting points, which is huge. Uh, you know, as an offense, I like, you know, play count. You want to run a lot of plays. By running a lot of plays, you now build material to work off of. So obviously something's going right, and now you had the ability to to get into your next drive and, and work off of that. Um, but I think maybe the biggest impact is it, it gives your defense a break, you know, and, and it puts a lot of pressure on theirs. Uh, you know, have a 99 drive, 99 yard drive, and then get the ball back quickly. It could it could have a big effect on the next drive. Absolutely. All right, one down, Coach. All right, here's a feeder question. Actually, two feeder questions. You ready for this one? Kitchen sink or seven diamond? Uh, you, you know, seven diamond's hard to beat, and it's probably only beat by kitchen sink. So uh, go ahead and fire that. Go ahead and fire that safety there, Todd Towns. All right, the follow-up feeder question. What wins championships, offense or defense? Yeah, it's offense. Offense wins And now you know, folks. It's, it's kind of like baseball, right? Pitching or hitting. You know, That's right. Getting in big games, that pitching's important. All right, so we got another good question here. Uh, we've got some great momentum on this building right now. A lot of success. Uh, how do you keep the players focused? What, what is your motto in practice to keep these guys head straight? You know, I hate speaking in cliches, and, but everybody uses that, that term process. You know, and, and you know, <laughs> I try not to use it just because it's so common and I think it gets overused, but that that's truly it. You, you build a process, you build, uh, you know, whether it, we've got several different models of that from focusing on our keys to victory or ball security and those and, and those type of things and in the red zone to, to what we do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in a very thematic, intentional way and continue to improve and tweak upon it. You know, we didn't just throw you know, a four-day practice plan out there, out there and say, well, this is going to get us to the state championship. There has not been one week that has been 100% the same. Uh, and a lot of that is, you know, I can only start from what I do. Uh, I brought, you know, brought my practices in and, and 
they didn't work through them. They weren't where we wanted them to be. So, you know, part of that is, is educating the guys what they need to do. But part of that is me also tailoring what, what we've done in the past to what they, they do, what we need to do. So, um, again, each week, you know, if, if we have a bad five-minute period, I, that'll bother me, you know. And, and so we'll, we'll stay stay on it and continue to work. And, you know, it's, it's that old saying, if you make practice harder than the games, the games become pretty easy. And uh, that's, that's something we believe in. And that's, again, one of our one of our keys is, you know, practice is everything. Yeah, you know, I, I think we – been talking about this a couple of weeks ago where you, you know you came in you've got a very structured practice schedule uh, and you know speaking from a player's perspective knowing that you're going into a, a monday practice a tuesday practice a wednesday practice and you know your schedule you know that there's consistency in that that's a big deal as a player that, i think that helps you write away what happened in the previous week by thinking about what I'm going to be doing today because you already know it. And that consistency as a player I think is really important. Yep, and it's that fine line of consistency to monotony, right? So, you know, there is, we try to keep, you know, a thematic consistency with each day. This is kind of what the importance is, but we will change and tweak periods. You know, I'm still working and, and you know, the flow of practice is really important to me. I think we've talked about it before. Of, you know, you can't stay low for too long and get bored, and you can't stay high for too long and get worn out. So it, 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 there's a lot of ebbs and flows that we do with practice and, and, you know, where we put a special teams period or where we put a water period. Those, those things are fought out in hopes of creating the best flow to practice. Great. All right. Chalking good answer up on that one, Coach. <laughs> but that didn't seem ways I've had bad answers. <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> All right, West Forsyth. Uh, great question right here. What is West Forsyth saying about us this week? What are the conversations that are going on between the coaches and the coaches and the players? I don't know. Yeah, that, that, it's hard for me to answer because I'm not in the room. Um, you know, I, from being over there uh, and, and having what is now a very cool perspective of, of being outside now being inside looking out you know one thing that we were confident in last year and, and I'm sure they're still confident in now is that you know hey Milton's going to overlook us you know, Milton, Milton doesn't respect us and I'm sure they're going to be using that um, that 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 message and and there's no doubt they're gonna they're gonna tie me into that now. As, you know, he he left y'all for them. You know, what do you think about that? And they're gonna use that to, I would imagine, to, to motivate them. And I, you know, they're gonna be a motivated bunch coming in here and, and you know have a great week of prep. They actually get two weeks of prep for us. Um, you know, I hope though that, that the way we the way we scheme, the way we build, you know, each week is a new week uh, to a certain degree. Uh, and a lot of that is intentional as well because, you know, what are you going to prepare for? And, and what are we going to have in store for you this week? So, um, All right, so how much of that coaching staff over there is the same? What, what's the, uh, the majority what's the of the defense is the same. Uh, my, my old defense coordinator, assistant head coach, is still defense coordinator, along with special teams coordinator, and linebackers coach. Uh, and some of those guys are on that defensive side. But for the most part, the guy they brought in, uh, Sean Cahill, came from Lanier. He was the offense coordinator. Uh, and he brought in some guys with him. Uh, some from Lanier, some from other places. So, so kind of half and half. Yeah. So what have you seen change in their schemes? Um, you know, there, there's some similarities. The, the biggest scheme change for them is the fact that the quarterback changed. Um, you know, I've alluded to that some is, is you know, that Kieran, our, our quarterback from last year, was, was a tremendous pocket passer. Um, you know, he's going to complete 70% of his balls. He's going to throw, he can make every throw on the field. He can reach three and, and all those kind of things. Uh, the quarterback that they have now was the slot receiver that I told you about. He had 47 catches back to back years. He's much more mobile. So you're going to see more of a quarterback run game, more of a rollout game. Uh, you know, it's called a power read uh, system that you'll see. Cam Newton kind of really made that famous at, at uh, uh, Auburn and, and now in the pros. So you'll see, you'll see kind of more of that style of attack. Great. All right. Last set of questions. Uh oh. This one will be fun. 
All right, because we're, we're doing a little speed round here. All right, so just loosen up. No thinking. Yeah, just loosen the brain up. Whatever you gotta do. Tim, you know what to rub his shoulders. Somebody have a cold towel ready? All right, coach. Bud Light or Miller Light? Move on. They answered that quick. You didn't even realize it. It's a bud. Beach House or Lake House? I don't like sand. Boxers or briefs? Boxer briefs. Spoken like a head coach. Dave Matthews or Luke Bryan? That's tough. I know Luke, so I gotta go with Luke. Oh, yeah. That's good, coach. I went to college with Luke. Yeah. That was, uh, that, that was our, oh yeah, Georgia Southern State. Spent some time down there. When's, when's Luke Bryan a concert? We're all going. I, wait, I, I don't want to miss Lee. I don't know him that way. He was the thing down there. Um, no, I wrote it down, Coach. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Roll Tide or War Eagle? Well, I'm an eagle, so... Alright, uh, we're done. <laughs> and I wouldn't put either one of them out if they were on fire. Alright. Cheese pizza or meat lovers? Meat lovers. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. I don't about. know that there is a such a thing as bad pizza. <laughs> Coke or Pepsi? Oh, that's not even classic. We're in the ATL. Coca-Cola. <laughs> All right, cowboy boots or loafers? <laughs> I love to compare cowboy boots, but I'll wear loafers more. All right, and Ford or Chevy? Uh, Chevy. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I got. There we go. All right, and we'll, we'll put you, we're going to put you on the spot one more time, Coach. Offense or defense? Oh, wow. yeah, I love offense. <laughs> he loves offense. That's the fun part of the game. Points, All right, and last question, Coach. When you're not coaching football, when you're not at the school, when you're just hanging out, what are you doing for fun? It's as boring as it sounds. Me and the wife love a good binge show. So we're going to lay on the couch and watch some Game of Thrones. Netflix and show. Netflix and show. Yeah, we just finished our TMI hour, <laughs> but what a great night. Yeah. Uh, Coach, that was a lot of fun. Thanks again for being candid. Appreciate that. Congratulations again on a big win. And folks, let's wrap it up. That's another great night of the special edition of Black Corner. After being the last one, we're supporting the seven at the Hornets Nest. Congratulations. Coach.